I got a special video for my hag lovers or anyone who just picked up the hag. This video is gonna be for you. I am a hag main and in this video, I'm gonna be showcasing my strongest hag build. This is the build I've been using for a very long time now. I've been getting great results with this build as well as I'm gonna analyze two matches that I played. It's gonna be quite different from the commentaries that I put up on this channel just because I'm gonna be watching the video and telling you what was going through my mind during specific moments of the match. So you're gonna get to see why I put traps in specific areas because sometimes when I do commentate it's kind of hard to explain everything at once but because i'm analyzing i can give you guys more in-depth detail all right so if you are new to my channel my name is Negus, and i am a plague and hag main and i do post informative gameplay for those killers so if you do enjoy that sort of content don't forget to drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button but without further ado let's get into the perk build so let's get into perk number one we have corrupt intervention this perk I think should be a staple in most hag builds just because it gives you time to set up your traps in the beginning of the match without you getting gen rushed okay so what this perk does is in the beginning of the trial the entity is going to seal off the furthest three generators from you for two minutes okay so you're gonna have two minutes to set up traps and don't really have to worry about survivors slamming gens right away this perk also gives you an idea of where survivors are going to spawn survivors usually spawn further away from you so they are most likely going to spawn near the corrupted gens so you will have an idea of where they spawn for the next perk we got save the best for last for those of you who have been following me for quite some time now you know this is my absolute favorite perk on the hag and what it does is when you hit your non-obsession with your basic attack you're gonna gain a stack the maximum amount of stacks you could have is eight and for every stack you have you're gonna get a five percent cooldown after your basic hit the maximum amount of cooldown you can have is 40 percent all right so why does this benefit the hag this is great on hag because if you hit a survivor and they're running to a nearby trap you might be in that sluggish end lag after your hit and they trigger your trap and they literally just run by your trap and you don't get value out of it but if you have a couple stacks to save the best this will increase the chances of you having less cooldown and giving you that time to possibly teleport to that trap and get another hit on them okay this perk is also good when Hag has that basement pressure. So she does get a survivor in the basement when she has stacks with save the best. If a survivor does trigger a trap in the basement, you can hit that survivor quickly. If they go for the unhook, you could down that survivor that went for the unhook and possibly down that other survivor that they unhooked. So save the best is insane on the Hag and I love it, man. It's my favorite perk on her. For the next perk, we got agitation. I know a lot of you are going to be like, what the hell? Agitation? Why would he use that on the hag? Well, I'm going to explain. So what this perk does is when you're carrying a survivor on your back to hook them, you're going to move 18% faster and your tear radius is going to be increased by 12 meters. We don't care about the tear radius thing. We care about the moving the survivors to the hook faster thing. All right. So why would you want to move survivors to the hook faster this benefits you in many ways in order to get really really good value out of the hag you want to make sure you're hooking survivors within your web of traps so that the other survivors on the map have to now come in your web of traps in order to get that survivor off the hook so if you down a survivor outside of your web of traps this perk allows you to just pick up a survivor from far away and bring them deep within your web of traps, okay? That's the number one benefit to this perk. Another benefit to this perk is that it will allow you to make basement plays. Hag in the basement, she is probably unstoppable. If you give her basement pressure, it's pretty much GG. And this perk is gonna increase your chances of you getting better basement pressure as well as this perk does punish teams that like to take body block hits and do all of that fancy stuff while you're carrying survivors to the hook. 
And for the last thing that this perk can do, I know a lot of you hag players can relate to this. The most annoying thing is when you pick up a survivor and you're carrying them to the hook and you hear three to four traps just get triggered while you're carrying that person to the hook. And you're like, damn, bro, I wish they could have just triggered it just a little bit later so I could have had time to teleport to that trap. Well, agitation is going to help with that, okay? So you're going to be able to get survivors on the hook quickly so that if survivors do want to trigger your traps while you're picking up you can have an increased percentage of getting to those traps when they do try to trigger them when you're carrying someone to the hook so sometimes i swap agitation for the perk called surge and what it does is when you down a survivor with your basic attack any generator that is within 32 meters of you is going to regress by eight percent and this perk does have a 40% cooldown. This perk is really good on Hag because most of the time you're going to be holding down a 3 to 4 gen strat. This perk is just going to give you some generator regression just in case survivors are rushing gens around you, okay? So this perk does come in handy on the Hag specifically because majority of the time you are holding down a 3 gen. And last but not least, we got Franklin's Demise. And what it does is when you hit a survivor with your basic hit, you could slap any item in their hand onto the ground. The longer that item stays on the ground is the more charges it's going to lose over time. If that item stays on the ground for 90 seconds, that item is going to have zero charges, okay? And while you're within 32 meters of that item, the aura of that item will be revealed to you in white. And over time, the aura will begin to turn red as it loses charges. So this change to Franklin's demise has made it a lot better. And it is a buff to Franklin's because... This perk is now going to kind of put survivors in the situation to be f forced to kind of pick that item up because they know the longer it stays on the ground and some more it's going to be useless, especially if they bring a really rare item, okay? So this perk is going to increase the greed of survivors and you can capitalize off their greed by putting traps on their items so that if they do go back to pick it up you could get a easy hit or a easy down on them i can't tell you how many times i got free downs just because survivors are so greedy and they want to get their items back okay so this perk is nuts on the hag and it also counters the hag's main weakness the hag's main weakness is flashlights if a team of flashlight bandits pull up to your match, it's gonna be a hard time for you if you don't have Franklin's, okay? And Franklin's is good because it's gonna get rid of their flashlights and most likely increase their greed because they know their main way to counter Hag is to use flashlights to burn their traps. But if you're trapping their flashlights and they're going back to pick it up, you're just gonna be getting some easy, easy downs, okay? It is also good for getting rid of medkits. Medkits can also be a problem sometimes. Getting rid of medkits is amazing because this means that survivors can't heal on their own. Usually survivors will go in a corner or go wherever and heal up while their other friends are slamming generators. But if they don't have medkits to heal up or any perks that could heal them, in order for one person to heal, they're gonna need a buddy to heal them. So that means that's two people not on generators that's actually really really good you know what i mean so this perk is incredible so that's it for my strongest build on the hag and uh yeah without further ado let's get into the gameplay analysis so this is match number one and before we get into the gameplay let's talk about the map that we spawn in on we spawn in on midwich elementary school this map is s tier for the hag okay like I, I smile every time I get this map. This map is so good for her just because the hallways all lead to one another and they're so narrow. So you could pretty much shut down any hallway, okay? So I'm going to show you how I start by setting up my web on this map. So I do spawn outside. There are two main entrances that lead into the school. So I trap that. I trap one of them up. And I start by trapping up a hallway. So what I like to do is put one trap at the end of the hallway, walk up to the middle of the hallway, put a trap there, and then walk up to the opposite end and put a trap there. And 
where I'm putting my traps are covering, as you can see, it's covering this entrance. It's covering like the uh, entrance over here as well. So if they do like come through the room and come out, they're also trigger the trap. And it's also covering the God palette. So this one trap that I put here is covering three different spots, okay? And this is the beauty about this map is because one trap could shut down multiple entrances, okay? So yeah, I do also have the add-ons that increase my setting trap speed so I could set traps so quickly. And yeah, someone was trying to get my attention there, but I just ignore them and continue to set up my traps. Never let survivors distract you in the early game. My web is pretty much complete here. And I'm pretty much just waiting for the fun to begin at this point because once they enter that side of the map, it's literally GG. I heard someone on this gen here. Someone triggered a trap and I just instantly teleport. Yeah, this was a Zarina with a toolbox. And I was kind of chasing her just to see where she would go. I wasn't going to overcommit to the chase if I saw she wasn't going to my trapped area. But this Kate here triggered a trap. And she ran in that room. And I'm pretty sure she jumped down in the hole in that room. But I just ignored her and reset my trap here. Okay. I don't really overcommit to chases as you can see. And I do find this Meg here and I got a quick hit on her. Serena triggered a trap. She dropped down and had balance and I swung early, but luckily we had this trap here and we got a good hit on her there too. So I reset the trap and this is where it goes downhill for them because I have three of them injured and all it takes is for them to step on my trap once and it's just an insta down. And for those quick, easy hits, I'm always pressing my teleport button. So guys, I do play on pc but i use a ps4 controller and i'm always pressing the l1 button on hack like at all times <laughs> i know people who play on pc also use the uh, scroll wheel just so that they could get a uh, quick easy hits as well those traps that i put down in the beginning are paying off and they're literally just dcing because yeah this guy just gave up they, they know, like, Hag on Midwitch is S tier. Just trap the hallways on this map and you should be good. Put three traps on every hallway and it's pretty much GG. Make sure you trap upstairs and downstairs and you're good to go. Okay, so this is match number two and I spawn in on Suffocation Pit. So the way this map is set up is pretty much one big map, but it's kind of like split in half. As you can see here, there are four generators behind me and that's on the opposite side from where i am so most likely we know the survivors spawn all the way back here uh, we do have corrupt intervention so that's gonna seal off the furthest three generators so the survivors won't be able to work on any generators except for one back here so most likely they're all gonna be rushing to this side trying to hop on gens so i gotta make sure i set up my web before they come through all right and as you can see the side that i spawn in on is the more survivor sided side okay survivor sided side that even whatever anyways this side is loaded with tl walls jungle gyms and honestly the strong loops also killer shack is on this side as well luckily the basement was on our side and um yeah we do take advantage of that okay so i start off by setting up traps where i spawn so that when they come to my side of the map i am prepared and let's talk about the add-ons i'm using i don't know what this one's called the one on the left this is the one that allows me to place my traps faster so this allows me to set up my web really really quick i also got the dried kikata i think that's how you say it and this one uh, increases the distance to where you could teleport to your trap on the map. So you could kind of spread out your traps a little bit more so you could teleport to them from a further distance. But yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, I trapped the teal wall where the window is. So if the survivor falls to the window, I get a hit. I put a trap here in this narrow pathway. And we could see this bill just staring me down. And guys, I know it gets so tempting to want to chase survivors because the way it is for most killers, you just want to start chasing survivors immediately. But with Hag, it's the complete opposite. You don't want to chase in the early game. 
make sure you set up a good amount of traps before you start chasing so yeah this bill was just looking at me and i glared at him too and i just started i just continued to set up my web and as you could see i'm trapping up strong places areas where i know survivors are gonna go to in the future and uh this trap i'm about to place here i want you guys to i'll hold on i'll place it and show you why i placed it here okay so let's rewind a little bit okay all right so as you can see here the trap that i placed down right here is gonna cover this generator so if a survivor doesn't run through here and try to hop on the generator they're gonna trigger the trap i'm gonna and i'm gonna be able to teleport and hit them as well as this trap is covering this loop so if a survivor does decide to loop here and they drop the pallet what i'll do is i'll loop around with them look at my mouse as you can see here loop around with them so i'll be on this side where the mouse is and i'll chase them around into the trap and if they trigger the trap i'll get a hit okay so this is what i mean about good placements with your traps make sure majority of the, the time that they're covering optimal places all right so i trap killer shack window this build was incredibly cocky like it i i don't just say that it's just by their movement oh look at me i want to get chased like i could tell that bill just wanted to get chased all right and uh what i do here is i slap that flashlight out of the cheryl's hand and put a trap on it okay make sure to trap the survivor's items when you slap it out of their hand and as you can see here let's rewind okay yeah, so that Cheryl picked up her flashlight. As I explained earlier about Franklin's, you could see the greed. She wants to pick up her flashlight because she knows the longer it stays on the ground, is the more useless it's going to be, okay? And I want you guys to look at what I'm about to do here. This is very important, and I do this all the time with Hag, and this is pretty much forcing survivors into your traps, okay? So let's take a look here. All right, so I know the Cheryl is behind this wall. This is the L wall. I know she's behind here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a trap here. And now she has to leave this loop. She can't loop the L anymore because she'll get hit. Okay, so I'm going to come from this side now and push her towards the T wall where I have my traps. Okay, you always want to force survivors into your traps. And this is what I did to force her into the trap that I had there, okay? So, yeah, I did fail. I missed. But you get the idea, all right? You always want to force survivors into your traps just by switching up your movement. So I trap her flashlight. Her flashlight is now depleting. She's there on the hook just staring at her flashlight. And this Bill, yeah, he was really good at avoiding my traps, but we do get revenge on him later on. And you can see the greed there. This girl got unhooked and literally went to pick up her flashlight. This is what I mean with Franklin's. This is what I mean. Survivors just get so greedy. And I get a hit on the nail. That nail literally cost their team the match, but we'll get into that later on. Alright, so they're triggering my traps, and I'm just resetting. This Bill is really good at avoiding my traps. And um, we do what he does here. This is another example. Let's rewind just a little bit. Okay. He drops the pallet. And now, I'm not going to break the pallet. I'm not breaking the pallet. I'm going to come from this side. And now he's kind of forced to move over here. Okay. As you can see, I forced him into that trap, and I got a hit. That's what I mean with... Forcing survivors into your traps. I'm not going to commit to him. I'm going to continue to set up my traps here. And now, this is where the game goes downhill for them. This Nea right here cost their team the match. She was out positioned. She maybe could have got to this pallet in time. But I think I still had the trap over there. I'm not too sure someone triggered it. But um, yeah, she... Came back to Killer Shack. We we got her out positioned here. And I was waiting for Dead Hard. Because majority of Naya's have it. And this is where it goes downhill. Because the basement is in Killer Shack. Okay. So yeah. This is 
literally what won me the game. This just this is what I mean. When Hag gets a one basement hook, it could cost the team. All right, and what I do is I put a trap. I most of the time I put my trap right there in that spot. I get a down on the bill. Go for the pickup, and I try to get him in the basement here, but. I thought someone palaced on me here, but I found out that he had power struggle, which was unfortunate, but yeah, that sucks. Um, right here, I think I could have played it better. I should have put a trap here. I should have put a trap up here before I teleported to the basement, but it's okay. We do get a hit on the Cheryl. We get a hit on the Nea with Borrowed. I don't know what she was doing here. I'm pretty sure she had DS. And uh, yeah. That's what I mean with save the best for last. You could just get quick, quick slaps when survivors are in the basement. And I got a quick down on the Cheryl. So now the pressure's on and uh, they pretty much have to enter that basement. And get that Naya out before I go back in that basement. And yeah, we got the build down. This is literally GG for them. We did get some, a bit of, I don't know whether to call it agitation value, but as you can see here, I get a quick hit on the uh, Claudette. I got a quick hit on the Naya. And we're still able to get this hook. That was also saved the best value because we had less cooldown. And I replace a trap. So as you can see there, one basement hook brought me this much pressure. Now the survivors literally have to like come through my web in order to get their friends off the hook. And uh, the way this map is, is that it's so kind of like narrow in the middle. So that they kind of have to come through these different spots. Over here, in the middle, and over here in order to enter the killer shack. And we do have a couple traps here. But in the meanwhile, I set up a couple more traps. Because they're healing up, trying to come for the save. I tried to moonwalk her, but she was aware and got the vault there. I'm gonna chase her back into it, I think, or... Oh, she left. But we hit the Claudette. And I believe the Claudette DCs at this time. Yeah, she DCs. Naya had borrowed. Yeah, so they were, they were going to the opposite side to heal up, but I wasn't allowing that. And this is the only time I'll go out of my web when there's less than four survivors. I know they're both not on gen, so I really don't care. At this point, I was just committing to chases. I wanted to get this Nia out of the game. And I was right. Yeah, she did have DS. That's why she mended in front of my face in the basement earlier. Because she wanted to get that DS off. Okay, so yeah, I just literally just go for the Nia here. Uh, yeah, Cheryl comes here for a protection hit. This game is pretty much over. Nothing she could do now to save the Nea. So we see the Nea go here. I'm pretty sure she's going to go around. She she went around this rock while I was coming through. So right now she's on like the, the, the back of the rock there. So what I do here is I put a trap at the pallet. And now... I'm going to come walk around and force her into that trap that I just placed down. And boom. That's another example of forcing survivors into your traps. She couldn't do anything there because I don't think there are any other pallets around. But that's another example. Okay. So right here is very important. And it's this. This is not about using the hag, but. Playing killer in general, it's about tracking, okay? So right here is very important. As you can see back there, that's a Cheryl. So we know she's running in this direction, okay? She's running over here. So there's a Cheryl. 
So we know right away that we do have some traps here. So she does run by here. She would have triggered those traps by now, right? Okay, let's keep it going. So I'm looking for scratch marks right now. I don't see no scratch marks leading off there. And if she ran past here, I'm pretty sure she would have triggered any of these traps. But I'm like, wait a minute. If she didn't trigger those traps and I don't see scratch marks, where else would she be? And guess what's right beside me, guys? We got a locker. So this is what I this is what I mean with tracking. This is what you gotta learn as killer in general, all right? You gotta know how to track, and that was pretty much the match. We did get a little bit of salt in the end game chat. They were being so sarcastic. Oh, Hag is so much fun. I knew they were bad. I knew they were bad, but uh, that's how it goes, man. When you play the Hag, you're gonna get a lot of hate. But uh, I hope you found this video informative. I think this was like the second video i made like this on my channel if you want more videos like this let me know in the comment section down below but yeah i will see you guys in the next one